Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Young Israel of Hollywood, Fort Lauderdale, Behind the Zmiro. My name is Avi Fryer, and I'm going to talk about a Zemer, but first, I would like to share with you three stories. Not the whole story, just a short synopsis of each story, so it won't take that long. The first story is a story of a person who is going away, going away on a trip, and this person is going to leave behind someone that they love very much. And they need to go for whatever reason. We don't exactly know why, but they want to give the person the opportunity to come with them. And they share with them, if, if you don't come with me, you're going to miss me. You're going to miss me a lot. Every place you look, you're going to see me. Every place you go, you're going to think about me. But really what they're saying is, I'm going to miss you. And they head off on their journey. We don't end up finding out if the person goes with them. The second story is also of two people who love each other very much, a grandfather and grandson. And they too go on a journey. They go together. When they go on their journey, they get into a fight, which sets off a chain reaction of terrible events that just makes their entire journey miserable. And all the grandson wants to do is just end the journey and go home. And for whatever reason, it seems that he can't. The third story I'd like to share is also of two people who love each other and something has driven them apart forcing one of them to go on a journey far away. We don't know where, but he tries to get word to this person who he loves, giving a list of impossible tasks that he wants her to do. And if she can do these tasks, which are really impossible, it will prove that she still loves him and he'll come back to her. What do these stories have in common? Well, the first thing is obvious. There are people who love each other. There are journeys involved. There are conflicts. But there are some very specific things that they also have in common. They are all stories that are told in song. Not just any songs, but songs that have been around for a very long time, but have only become popular more recently. The songs I'm talking about, if you didn't pick up on it yet, the first one is called When I'm Gone. And it's an Appalachian folk song that dates back to its original recording in 1931, but it didn't really get popular until Anna Kendrick performed it in the movie Pitch Perfect in 2012. The second story I told is the story that is told in the song Sloop John B. It was originally called the John B. Sales, and it's a Bahamian folk song that goes back to the turn of the 20th century, the early, about, about 100 years old. It's a, a little over 100 years old. And that song gained huge popularity when the Beach Boys recorded it in, there we go, in 1966. And the third, can you guess? Do you know which song I'm talking about? The third song is Scarborough Fair. And that, that song is hundreds of years old. There's, there's no exact pinpoint on how old it is. But we know that that song became popular also in the 1960s when Simon and Garfunkel recorded it. So we have conflict. We have people who love each other. We have songs that are old and have been made new again. And there's one more thing that all of these songs have in common. And that is Doror Yikra, this week's Behind the Zmiro. All three of these songs have somehow become the popular tunes that people use to sing the song Doror Yikra at their Shabbat table. In fact, the Sloop John B version is so popular that if you look on the Wikipedia page for Sloop John B, which is what I did while I was preparing to say these words today, you will see that in the cultural references section, it mentions that Jewish people 
use this tune for the song Doror Yikra when they sing it at their Shabbat table. So anyone who has heard me um, lead the davening on Simchas Torah at Musaf would probably have guessed that I would choose Doror Yikra as the zemer of choice that I would like to speak about on Behind the Zmirot uh, because of all of the Zmirot that we sing at the Shabbat table, uh, this is the one that has the most popular music, secular tunes to it. The question is why, and why these tunes? In truth, <laughs> these tunes were not chosen for Doror Yikra because of any special meaning, although in a moment we're going to see some parallels between Doror Yikra and these songs which have been chosen over the past few years as tunes for Doror Yikra. But the real reason why Doror Yikra has so many secular tunes that have been chosen to sing the song is that it's one of the first and one of the only zmirot that we have at the Shabbat table that follows a meter that mimics the current music that we listen to today. It was written by a Jewish poet named Donash ben Labrat, who was a Sephardic Jew living in the 10th century. And he borrowed from the Arabic meter of poetry when he wrote Doror Yikra, as opposed to using the more common flowing style of Jewish poetry that we have in basically all of the others Miro that we sing at the table. Like the songs that I told the stories of in the very beginning, um, Doror Yikra has some opposing viewpoints, some even contradictions within it that I'd like to focus on for a moment. Donash signs his name acrostically like many other Jewish poets have done over the years, and you'll see he does it in um, four of the six verses of Doror Yikra, in the first, the second, the third, and in the sixth. And then there are two in which he does not um, put his name acrostically in. In all of the ones in which he puts his name acrostically, he's speaking to the Jewish people. And in the two where he does not put his name, he's speaking to Hashem. In all the verses where he's talking to us, the Jewish people, he, he's saying great things. We need, to, we need to work the land of Eretz Yisrael. We need to enjoy Shabbat and rest and enjoy, their, enjoy our surroundings. Uh, we need to trust that Hashem will bring us peace, will take care of us, and that our soul should know that the Torah will be like a crown on our heads and we should observe the, the mitzvot, and it closes by telling us to make sure that we observe Shabbat. In the verses where he's speaking to Hashem, he asks Hashem to let the, the desert bloom. Clearly, I would think we're talking about Eretz Yisrael here, and to give, to give peace to those of us who, who live there and who, who follow Hashem. And then it goes on very violently, asking Hashem to destroy our enemies, and then, back to us, open our mouths so that we can sing a joyful song to you, Hashem. This song seems to be fraught with contradiction and conflict, very similar to the three songs that I quoted from earlier. In Scarborough Fair, the, the main character, the speaker, calls upon his lover to do all of these impossible tasks all to prove how much she loves him. In Doror Yikra, we are asking Hashem to make the desert bloom for us, an impossible task which he has managed to do, but with our help. It was not just us relying on Hashem, but it was something that we had to roll up our sleeves and get involved in doing ourselves. In fact, in a much earlier version of the Scarborough Fair poem that precedes Simon and Garfunkel's performance of it. She sends word back to him, giving him a list of tasks which he's going to have to do in order to prove that he loves her. So it's a two-way street in the original version of the story. When you think of the relationship between a grandchild and a grandparent, you only think about love. You only think of love Usually it's the, the parents who discipline the children and the grandparents who spoil the children. 
So the John B. Sales or Sloop John B. opens up with contradiction. It starts off with the, the grandfather and grandson going on a trip. They start drinking and all of a sudden they're fighting. And the grandson is so broken up that all he wants to do is go home. Those are the words, the lyrics that he repeats over and over again. I feel so broke up. I want to go home. <laughs> and we have a similar contradiction within Doror Yikra. When Donash calls upon Hashem, show us love, let us sing your praises, give us peace and crush our enemies, destroy them. And I don't think that that's as much of a contradiction as one may think, because people think that in order to achieve peace, you have to just strictly want peace and be all about peace and love. But the truth is that peace is not something that can be achieved or negotiated from a position of weakness. Peace is something that can only be achieved or negotiated from a position of power, from a position of strength. And that's a big piece of the story of Eretz Yisrael and Medinat Yisrael that exists today, that any peace that we've been able to achieve has only been achieved by achieving strength, by crushing our enemies. When I'm Gone, otherwise known as the Cups Song, We don't know why the main character in the song is leaving. We don't know really if there was necessarily a conflict. What we do know is that the person has to leave and they long for this other person to be with them. And they try to entice them. No matter what, whatever you think, you know you're going to miss me when I'm gone. There are times throughout Jewish history when Hashem has had to withdraw himself from the Jewish people. And we can look at those times in history and very easily identify that we missed having him close to us, how we missed having him close to us, why we missed having him close to us, what we missed about having him close to us. And if you look throughout Doror Yikra, there are references to this as well. Donash writes of, of us seeking out the Beit HaMikdash, planting, planting a, van, a branch within the, the vineyard. It's this closeness to Hashem in Eretz Yisrael that we long for that is written about throughout Doror Yikra and that appears in that, the third tune that has become a popular way of singing Doror Yikra. So have a look at the lyrics of Sloop John B., the lyrics of Scarborough Fair, the lyrics of When I'm Gone, and think about those when you put the music to the words of Doror Yikra. The sound is beautiful. The harmonies are incredible. But there are also some parallels between the stories and not only the words of Doror Yikra, but the things that we long for in our own lives things that we long for in our relationships with other people and in our relationship with Hashem. Like Scarborough Fair, we want Hashem to do impossible things for us, and He's willing. Sometimes, like the old version of Scarborough Fair, He'll write back to us and say, there are things you need to do as well. Like Sloop John B., there will be times when we will be at odds with Hashem, who should be just all about love, like a grandfather and a grandchild. There will be times when we'll be at odds, but all we'll say is, I just want to go home. And like in When I'm Gone, there will be times when we'll be separated from Hashem. And everywhere we look, we'll see all the reasons why we miss Hashem. And you could see all these things throughout Doror Yikra, but bottom line, the song closes with the secret to how we can renew this relationship, how we can reunite with our loved one, with Hashem. Let your soul know the Torah. It'll be a crown on your head. Observe the mitzvot of Hashem. Observe Shabbat.
So, may this Shabbat, coming at the at the conclusion of Hanukkah, a holiday of miracles, a holiday on which Hashem responded to our requests by performing impossible tasks for us. May this be the Shabbat that we are able to cement that relationship with Hashem. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. And enjoy three versions of Dororah Yikra. <laughs>